I thought your reading's really coming along. <laughs> can we edit in uh, some cricket noises at that point? Yo, can we cuss? You're going to cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am Joe Opinionated. Welcome to Desert Island Deathmatch. This time, new format. The band is The Tragically Hip. We have four guests with us today. Go around and just kind of introduce everybody. So we're going to start with from youngest to oldest. Hello and good day. My name is Tristan Armstrong, originally from Nanaimo, British Columbia. live in Toronto, Ontario. I've seen The Tragically Hip I believe 11 times. I've seen them in really tiny places as well, like a supermarket and Kensington Market here in Toronto, a Leaf season opener and Young and Dundas Square outdoor show, a bunch of other times. Love them. Met a couple of the guys, really sweet dudes. Jesse Olson from Vancouver Island, uh, born and raised here. I'm one of the few uh, talentless non-musicians. I've seen the hip about six times. Two of them that stand out was one time at the Commodore Ballroom when they were doing four back to backers and we kind of you know wiggled our way up to the very very front gourd in his absolute element and it was 2006 i think it was a world container tour their last vancouver show in 2016 unreal incredible my name is tristan living in new york city but originally from nanaimo vancouver island seen the hip lots of times first time was i believe 98 the last roadside attraction tour with uh los lobos and wilco and shell crow i always was a hip fan as a kid you know growing up the music was always playing in the house but i didn't really know uh didn't really think of them too much of a live band until got a chance to see them live people would oh they're just a, a bar band with a poet but even once you see the full thing live you're like whoa and then uh and then saw the phantom power tour me and me and joe were at that one together and i believe jordan you were at that one too weren't you I think that's so. Uh, that was my first in Toronto. Same thing. Small venue was at was at the supermarket shows. I saw them at Lee's Palace, Air Canada Center a couple times. I saw Gord Downey solo the last tour, the opening night in Victoria, which is probably my favorite all time show ever. Hi, my name is Jordan Venn. I am forty three years old. I, I mean, it's, this is almost like hip anonymous. Joe, can we cuss? Uh, my name is Jordan Venn. I'm from Port Alberni, British Columbia originally, but I've been in Toronto for the last 20 years. I uh, used to live in Tristan Clark's uh, bedroom. Only seen the hip twice. First time was 1998 for the Phantom Power at GM Place. The second time was the second to last ever show. Tristan Armstrong had two tickets and he's like, hey, you want to go to the, uh, the penultimate hip show? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Might have shed a tear. Probably not. I'm not much of a cry. Had two sips of whiskey and now I now I'm talking nonsense. I started liking the band in '93 or '94. My buddy was listening to Fully Completely. I thought the album looked lame and I wasn't having anything to do with it. And then he's like, "Just check out the Courage video." And I was like, "Holy shit, this is awesome!" I've seen the Hip twice, but I have seen like Gord with the Sadies four or five times. He was doing a bunch of like protest shows in Toronto uh, maybe ten years ago. The first thing I can remember from the Hip was uh, Greasy Jungle. I really didn't like that song. I didn't get it. When I was in grade eight or nine, bought four tickets for the Tragically Hip at Pacific Coliseum, my friend Ian. He had two good tickets down low and two tickets up high. So me and my brother took the tickets up high. Then I got my mom to drive me to Woodgrove Mall, Woodward's, and I bought a cassette. I ended up buying Trouble in the Hen House on cassette. And that was the tour that I was going to see. I didn't know that that was the album for this tour or anything like that. I brought it home. The first three songs went by. I recognized the head by a sentry. And then Don't Wake Daddy came on. And I was lying on my brand new futon bed when he said, rest your head on your new fun on your futon bed so many miles from home. And that was it. That was the moment. Started really listening. And then Flamenco after that, 700 foot ceiling. It was over. The last time I went, I took my son to his first concert, the last tour in, what was it, 2016? And the show I went to, Jesse was also at the same show. The playlist was incredible. They played Don't Wake Daddy, which was pretty important. And uh, my wife's favorite song was uh, Head by Century. They played those two, I think, back to back. And then my son was there with us. I took a picture of my son, who was only seven at the time. Rob Baker sent a message back. Rob Baker, one of the members of the band, just saying that he, li or he liked the photo or something like that. We're going to do the Desert Island Death Match uh, a little bit different this time. So it's going to be a draft Desert Island playlist, 10 song playlist for each of us. Nobody can take the same songs. Yeah, we're yeah. so Tristan, um, Tristan was the last person to arrive. So yeah, we've actually changed the rules a little bit. And we're actually just going to pick 10 songs. It's draft style. Once the song is taken, you can't take it. There'll be 50 songs mentioned. First pick 
Magic Desert Island Deathmatch goes to Tristan Armstrong. Like, you want to pick the best song first, right? Because you want your playlist to be the fucking best. So pick your. I'll steal Escape from you. Yeah, pick yeah, pick your favorite song <laughs> first, dude. Well, I I have considered that. Don't don't get me wrong, but I I think this first song is still going to be the one that I go with, and it's going to be Little Bones, Road Apples, Little Bones off of Road Apples. Those two guitar parts that happen, very energetic. The amount of time I've spent waiting in a physical lineup to get Tragically Hip tickets has been probably days. That Victoria show included. So Little Bones, I'm kicking it off with that. Pick number two goes to Jesse. First song for me is Thugs off of uh, Day for Night. Everyone's got their breaking point. For me, it's Spiders. For you, it's me, Thugs in Perpetuity. So I love the bass line. I love everything about that song. It's my favorite album for sure too. Wanted to make sure I, I took Thugs before anybody else snapped it up. Yeah, that's on my list. All right, up next, Tristan Clark. Now the rules have changed. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Tiger the Lion. Big track, music at work. Probably the most like Pink Floyd as Floydiest sounding tragically hip song for sure. Rob Baker's guitar solo at the end, like that song live, it's unstoppable, man. That's so the good. first uh, first live song I ever saw of tragically hip. I, it was at the music at work tour, and they opened with that song. It was very yeah. dope. Up next, Jordan Venn. All right, so I'm going to take a, a slightly different strategy here because I came to play. This isn't my favorite on my list. Prime Real Estate, I'm going to go with Gift Shop. Gift Shop from Trouble at the Hen House. If it's a lie, terrorists made me say it. Gems throughout that whole thing and the uh, instrumentation. <laughs> You know that part specifically remember that one on the, in that 99 phantom power show the lights when they when they went into the intro and the lights were just like those you know those those big white lights at the start it was all black yeah yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah his banana shaker craig for the banana shaker it's craig yeah, he's like oh uh, this is my banana <laughs> yeah, shaker yeah. craig tragically hip was like one of the biggest bands in canadian history there's five members gord downey gord sinclair robbie baker paul Engwa, johnny fay on drums johnny johnny fay is incredible anyways they're all amazing my first pick for my desert island playlist for tragically hip i'm going with locked in the trunk of a car the lyrics morning broke out the backside of a truck stop end of a line a real rainbow likening luck stop where you could say i became chronologically fucked up put 10 bucks in just to get the tank topped off if you listen to live at roxy in the rants for highway girl i think it was he was he was uh saying the lyrics to the song oftentimes when you listen to the older tracks he's just kind of freestyling in the middle of the song we'll often say lyrics from songs later on locked in the trunk of a car off of the album fully completely tristan armstrong you are up i would like to claim escape is at hand for the traveling man off of phantom power this track has a very cool mood it has a build. The high bass stuff Gord Sinclair does, that's kind of a signature hip thing. I feel like he does a lot of droning, open strings, and he's way up high. Also, just want to speak to the, the, the music nerds a little bit that Gord has a lot of melodies that kind of favor the, the major seven degree of the scale. Downey's yeah. melodies, like there's a lot of major seven interval. It has a mix of kind of cool moodiness, but it, it rocks at the chorus as well. Next up is Jesse. Great pick, uh, T-Bone. That was like fourth on my list too so really really good i'm gonna go with my favorite song ever and it was actually the first song i ever heard at the first concert i ever went to as well too and it's from day for night again it's brace two and it's always been my favorite and even when there's songs that you start to really love and you're like oh maybe this is my new favorite i always go back to grace two and nothing nothing tops grace two just that slow build the end when he starts just going frantic and crazy him, him hurt yet yeah, sure. yeah yeah now no. no, especially in those last shows too. Uh, I think it's the the very last show. I think they did it in one of the last encores, and he just gives every last piece of himself. He's screaming, dying in those moments, just giving everything, and it's heart wrenching. Grace two favorite song of all time, day for night. The last show was televised nationwide. I think it was ele- viewed by eleven million Canadians, which is third of pro- Canadians. Approximately <laughs> yeah, one third of the country watched that, tuned into that. When somebody chooses one that you had on your original list, we'll all kind of say, oh, yeah, that was on my original list. Well, that's what I was kind of saying. It was like that's on the last few picks. Yeah, that's probably where I got the idea from. <laughs> okay, yeah. So Grace 2 is definitely on my list. How about you guys? Yeah, Grace 2 is on my list for sure. Um, It was not on my list. It was also not on my list. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe we don't need to talk about if it's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe That's it's a terrible thing. thing. I'm going to go with the luxury. Okay, luxury, road apples. It's got a prostitute. It's got a hotel and, you know, 
golden bc yeah, yeah the golden rim motor in it closed down like a couple years ago i feel like that tune is like the first stepping stone into the band sort of getting a little bit of a cooler sound happening first record's amazing but it's very like roots rocks rolling stones road apples is a little bit of that too but i mean that's the first tune where you could see it, like you know venturing into like fully completely land or trouble at the hen house soft water and a color tv you can't enjoy the yeah. luxury i just love that line i love the lyrics yeah. to that song for sure this one i don't think any of you are gonna pick but i'm gonna grab it because it's my very favorite song by the hip it's apartment song when this album came out i didn't know what an aesthete was so i took it took the lyrics to my uh, grade 11 english teacher who was super fucking cool flannel wearing awesome <laughs> english teacher we kind of looked at lyrics together she told me what some of the stuff meant but my favorite part of the song is the end of the song when the horrible aesthete leaves the apartment and the apartment sort of becomes alive sort of personification it's sort of anthropomorphism it's really neither the uh walls stand a little more at ease right like her her energy is gone so the walls do stand a little more at ease right there's there's less tension in the room and uh mm -hmm. all all the various things in that section are that brilliant writing i always wanted to ask him what he was reading when he wrote it think of jord when i hear that song it is a great song Good. I'm up next. And so I'm going to go with Cordelia from Road Apples, 1991, song right before The Luxury that Tristan just took. Do you guys listen to that Getting Hip to the Hip podcast? The second season was like the two American guys listening to the hip for the first time and they're dissecting all the tunes and oh, they're going to love Cordelia. Like, how could you not love Cordelia? And they were just like, one guy says, like, first of all, that is the most boringest guitar riff I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah, but the you know, the lyrics come in and it's just like, you can't get it. Like Gord's performance is amazing. I just love the way that Gord sings it, the energy the song brings, the build. I mean, a lot of these songs, I mean, that's really what the songs do. I don't know the crescendo or whatever. Thief lingers on, on his hands and knees. Must be one more thing here. I really need die in your arms, falling on your knife. A thief blinded on the job has to steal for life. Takes all your power to prove that you don't care. I'm not Cordelia. I will not be there. There's a lot of Shakespeare. It was on my list as well. There's lots of Shakespeare references in that. So like the theater third in me loves all that kind of stuff like the whole idea of not being cordelia who was the only one of the daughters who was there for king lear and also the macbeth reference as well too you're not supposed to yell macbeth and he's screaming it out you're supposed to call it the scottish plate so screaming it out is super bad luck so it's kind of leads to all that franticness in his voice well when i did a joe pinated list last year it was my number one song on the list in my opinion the greatest tragedy of song is cordelia if i could i would shoddy all of phantom power that was my starting point for the band i'm gonna go with something on phantom power your imagination's having puppies it could yeah. be a video for new recruits i love the drum beat love the feel it has a momentum to it gord sinclair was saying in one of his um instagram things that he does that uh they basically wrote the song in the studio in a day i wonder if anybody else has this one on their list because we've already had a lot of hen house but my next song is sherpa uh yeah. from trouble at the hen house love this song so much i love the eerie eerie guitar riff that 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 just kicks it off and the lyrics me and the vivid girl i'm gonna go with 50 mission cap from fully completely how can you go wrong with the song about hockey in world war ii i love covering this song in bands because it's like the same verse twice and i think the subject matter is really really cool it talks about bill barilco the curse of bill barilco like how they how they haven't won a cup cup since he died and the whole story about this guy having this 50 mission cap or it's like you get this hat if you complete 50 missions, yeah, bomber missions, but he, but the song is about this guy who just, who just had the hat. He was never in like the air force, but he kept the uh, hockey card in his hat to give the hat its shape. And when he looked at the hockey card, he got all this info about Bill Barilco. Mm. <laughs> it's like this kind of crazy, awesome story about hockey and the, and the, and the Leafs not winning a Stanley Cup and, and the whole 50 mission thing. It's, it's, it's cool. And so <laughs> dense how that all that information is in like a small amount of lines of lyric. Yeah, I know. And that's what I said, like, it's, and, and it's, it's all in one verse. And then the second yeah. verse, it's the same verse, a shorter version of the first, the first verse. We did a road trip to a family reunion in Saskatchewan in 95, I want to say. And we listened to fully completely on repeat because we had one of those repeating tape deck players in the Cutlass Sierra. Part of the reason that my dad allowed the, that to happen was because every time he's a Leafs fan, right? So every time. Yeah. It, it repeated, he get to hear 50th Mission Cap. Okay, I'm gonna go with Poets, Phantom Power. Just rewatched this video recently. I will say that it's probably their best video. They're they're all playing and then Gord's walking around and he's singing, he stops singing and he starts to uh, take aim at the camera and then he'll stop and, and like mid sentence, 
continue singing. It's uh, got a lot of great poetry and it's a it's a banger i remember hearing him say uh he's been seeking reprieve from the heat in the frozen food section <laughs> yes uh, and uh i didn't I, I didn't know the word reprieve yet i and... think about that all the time when i'm in the grocery store love it did anybody else have poets i had poets i had poets too next pick for my desert island playlist for the tragically hip i'm gonna go with the track emperor penguin my favorite track on the album is the closer i like the tone of your trumpet come on let's spill some paint let's raise the glass of milk to the end of another day and a kiss that's still intangible the kids are all right just unmanageable they won't do a damn thing you say i didn't have kids when i was listening to this song when we were teenagers still just made so much sense at that time anybody else have that one on their list yeah nope it's the musical shift yeah it has some cool <laughs> spins harmonically and it just kind of changes vibe a quarter of the way through starts rocking when the uh, penguins uh make it onto the scene okay up next is tristan armstrong with pick number four pick number four guys okay i'm going with uh wild mountain honey <sighs> off of music at work and i feel like this is uh entering the psychedelic realm and i also kind of estimate that this is uh, a song that's coming a lot from Rob Baker's perspective. Because when I listen to stuff from Strippers Union, I, I hear a correlation there in the guitar work, the chord choices. It's just cool and psychedelic rock. A pick that's more about the music for me. That next song for me is, uh, I think, going to be on your guys' lists. Uh, it's Nautical Disaster from Day for Night. It's my favorite song lyrically. I think every single lyric in that song is perfect. Yeah. An afternoon, 4,000 men died in the water. 500 more were thrashing madly as parasites might in your blood. Fingernails scratching at the hull. Like, it's a haunting... I think it references World War II. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's one of the German battleships or something like that. But just the, course, it's one of the two songs they played on SNL as well. Too. I was going to say that, yeah. Part of the amazingness of the hip is that they never broke the states. And that's like, it's like, makes it that much more ours nautical disaster is definitely on my list is it on anybody else's list not on mine but the thing i like best about it i'm just gonna say real quick is the uh, live between us where he's uh this next song is getting turned into a feature film curmudgeonly lighthouse keeper i think it's about being haunted by a dream all day like a ptsd thing like he's having dreams about this thing that he lived actually that's kind of all how i always read it Ford also wanted it to be like he never really ever would say what the meanings were. Yeah, he, he always wanted, wanted people's to be interpretations ambiguous. to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He wanted their interpretations to be what the song, like if the song is about this for you, then that's what it's about kind of thing. I think Jesse and I both mentioned it before. Day for Night is probably my favorite hip album. What's your favorite hip album off the top of your head, guys? Jordan? Trouble. Probably. Phantom Power. Justin Clark, do you have a favorite hip album? Well, I go back and forth between two, Day for Night or Now for Plan A. It's Day for Night, but... Uh, Henhouse is creeping up. I'm going to go with a day for night tune. An inch an hour. That one's such a rocker, man. There's this fucking band you got to see. used to scare the living shit out of me. <laughs> that song pumps me up. Is that, was that on any other list? Yeah, that was on mine. Up next is Jordan Venn. Oh, I'm going to rob you guys right now. Yawning or snarling. Oh, day for night. Yeah that, was, yeah, that was on my list. The tableau he paints with his words. You You see mm -hmm. it. You see, you see the whole thing while you listen to it. And it's also kind of about, like, he paints this picture. Take a look at this photograph. Clearly is, uh, yeah. Keith were bared. You feel how hot everything is in El Paso. Starts out pretty soft and gets pretty big. It's definitely on my list as well, too. I love the bass line as well to kick it off. And when the drums kick in on walk past damaged goods and ugly trends. My fourth pick comes off of Trouble in the Hen House from 1996. That's a song that, that got me into the hip. It's Don't Wake Daddy. They can lay their heads on their futon beds so many miles from home. You teach your children some fashion sense and they fashion some of their own. For when the policy weary commune on the untamed land through white shears whispers in their ears, you're damned. Through white shears whispers in their ears, you're damned. So definitely the song i wanted to hear the most when i saw them the last time and they played it kurt cobain being reincarnated as a dog there was a gig in washington state i'm assuming where they were double billed nirvana and the trash clip did anybody else have don't wake daddy on their list i had it on there and uh, I, I have it on yeah i, I remember that I remember when the beginning of that song started because I knew we were there and I didn't see you there, but we were like texting back and forth. And I just remember being like, oh, Joe's going to be getting over the moon. Yeah, I remember I could actually see you from where I was sitting. But yeah, we didn't we didn't actually meet up that night. But I do remember that, too. I remember texting back and forth with you, too, because you got some of your favorite ones in there at the start mm -hmm. as well from fully completely. Next up is 
for pick number five, Tristan Armstrong. This will be halfway through it. Don't waste it. I'm going to uh, jump ahead to uh, another era of the band, and I'm going to choose Streets Ahead. Now for plan A, 2012, September, I, I had moved back to Toronto. I went to Kensington Market to uh, buy some vegetables. And I walk by supermarket and there's this guy standing out front, handing out wristbands, said hi to me walking by. He's like, hey man, you want to see the Tragically Hip? They're playing in here in like 45 minutes. I was like, yeah, man, hook me up. So it, it turned out they were doing these warm up shows for the Now for Plan A tour. And so I got to see them that day. I also saw them do a couple more of those shows because they, they lasted for like a week. They did a set that included new songs, which were The Look Ahead, Streets Ahead, and they also did Ahead by a Century. For the song itself, Streets Ahead, for me, it's all about, uh, again, Gord Sinclair and Johnny Fay and what they're laying down. It's kind of a, a sort of punky energy. Yeah, I love the bass line and the chorus energetic tune. Did anybody else have that song on their list? Oh, no, I didn't have it, but I mean, I love that album. And I saw those shows as well, because you called me right after like, hey man, the hip's doing like free shows at, at the supermarket. Now for plan A had one song when I did finally give it a, a chance that just crush me the first time I, I heard it. There's actually two, Gord writing this album when his wife was going through cancer. And so the the title track, Now for plan A from Now from for plan A, that that the beginning of that song just like absolutely crushes me every time I hear it and every time I hear it it crushes me more it's how he says those words yeah I know I know I know it's still not enough nothing short of everything nothing short of everything's enough that frustration of like I'm doing everything I can nothing is good enough giving up hope while she's in a hospital bed or something like that every time I think about that I think about my own wife I think about family members that song just crushed me. It might be one of their most emotional songs. So did well, anybody else have Now for Plan A? I didn't have Now for Plan A. Peak, tragically hip, ethereal guitar playing. The records are mixed so well. They're mixed like how they play live. Paul yeah. Lang was always on the left and Rob Baker's always on the right. I'll go with another uh, Now for Plan A tune and I'll pick uh, We Want to Be It. Another tune about you know his wife having cancer. Drip, 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 the IV drip, getting your chemo treatment everything sort of plays in threes and i remember seeing this tune live those lights they had the teardrops and they kept coming in drap, drap, drap. such a cool song kind of go back and forth between this one and day for night because i thought that one reminded me the most of day for night there's the bob rock albums and they're great don't get me wrong but when that album came out i was like yes they're back all right my next pick is about catharsis and my arses is capable of more flesh and adolescence in essence is all about trust uh, Head by a Century. I know that it's probably a simp pick. I think their most popular song. It's got a great riff, great, great lyrics. So there's an energy that kind of comes in after the toy drum set. The beat drops. Yeah, the beat drops. That's exactly. Yeah, thank you. That's right. The beat drops. Yeah, yeah. the illusions of someday cast in a golden light. No just rehearsal. This is our life. That's some deep shit right there. I wasn't going to go there, but yeah, I, I played... Uh... Ahead by a Century with you Johnny Fay on Johnny drums Fay, yeah. at Rebel Nightclub. That was actually facilitated by Dan Aykroyd, who was the host of the night. And he basically harassed right. Johnny to, to come up and play. He didn't really want to do it, but I guess they're neighbors and he sort of goaded him a bit. So he came up. So now my next pick is the, uh, is the title track for their biggest album, Fully Completely, from 1992. I ponder the endlessness of the stars, ignoring said same of my father. Either it'll move me or it'll move right through me, fully and completely. Whatever he's singing about, I get as passionate as he does. <laughs> when I'm singing along to this song, this song just energizes me every time. Tragically Hip has a live band, Gord riding the microphone stand, fighting with the microphone stand. Just such a stage presence, especially Gord. Interesting thing about, about that track and a couple of others, when, when they came out with uh, Your Favorites, that compilation, remember that? that was like 2005 yeah. or maybe 2006. Yeah, yeah. That song and, and Courage and, and maybe one other one were on that. They redid the drums to have yeah. a sort of more modern sound. So it was cool to have just more natural uh, yeah, drum yeah. tones. I had it on there too. I, I that, that was the album that I played the most because I, I i had it on tape in my 1988 pontiac grand dam that i had right up until you know the year 2002 or whatever so that was something that was looped a lot and fully complete was definitely my favorite song a song that took me 
forever to come to, even though I had listened to Trouble at the Hen House a fair amount. But like, you know, sometimes there's songs that's like, oh, this is a slow song. I'm not, you know, I'm going to skip over it. Later in life, like 2016, Flamenco was really speaking to me in, in a huge way. Maybe I'll go to New York. I'll drag you there. You said no one drags me anywhere. That just really spoke to me and the the relationship I was in at the time uh, seemed like he was speaking to me. And it's also one of those lines that it seems like someone actually said that. I had never seen it live. They played it that very last show as at with Jordan right before the song. I think they played Escape is at Hand as well, which I had never seen and was really hoping for. So those, those were kind of back to back. That was very special. Flamenco is on my list, too. And I think. I don't know if you remember this, but I remember we had a conversation about flamenco a ways back. And I remember because of that conversation, I'd gone back and listened to uh, it. It became okay. a favorite of mine as well, too. Interesting. You know, walk like a matador, don't be a chicken shit, turn breezes into rivulets. I love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously the, the most iconic line, maybe a prostitute could teach you how to take a compliment. Is uh, I saw that live only the first time that I saw them. And that was like a real stand out for me definitely on my list too next song for me is off of road apples last of the unplugged gems it's kind of like my sun king of the beatles when you listen to abbey road you know for the first time like sun king's just kind of one of those ones that just kind of drifts one day and you're listening to it and you're like oh my fucking god this song's amazing kind of what last of the unplugged gems is for me like driving in the car just the the vibe the feel of that song build be chilling too alone Last of the Unplugged Gems. I'm going to go with So Hard Done By. Great lyrics. Riff is amazing. I've always loved the song ever since it first came out. I remember having, you know, stealing the CD off my off my dad, going into my bedroom and just cranking it. And I would, I would just listen to the song on repeat. And this song was actually originally supposed to be on Fully Completely. It's a, monu- it. it's a monumental big screen kiss. It it's so deep, it's meaningless. it's meaningless. You know what? I'm going to go two for two on the uh, basic bitch category. And I'm going to say Bob Cajun from uh, Phantom Power. It hasn't been put out there yet, but it's it's just a banger. Christy Pitts riots. Yeah. In the middle of that riot, couldn't get you off my mind. Is that from the Christy Pitts riot? Apparently, yeah. Uh, the race riots. It's not really even about the lyrics for this song either. And I'm not really a lyrics guy most of the time. Obviously, with this band, it's kind of an exception for me. And again, I mean, he does kind of, again, take you to you're leaving your your girlfriend's house in the morning. You know, you have that hangover or whatever. You have that like that that like he takes you to a place but he also gives you the feeling that you're feeling when you're in that place. Yeah, and, that, and that, that cold car the next morning. Yeah, yeah. Like we've all been there. We've all felt yeah. that. He just kind of captures it all. So <laughs> I, it could have been the Willie Nelson. It could have been the wine. I never caught on to the Willie Nelson reference it when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. Could have been the weed, could have been the wine. I, I love that though, the Willie Nelson. The only reason why he picked Bob Cajun was because it was the only town with that rhymed with the word constantly. Yeah, he said it could have been anywhere. It could have been any town or something like that. Yeah, it, it just worked. Any yeah. town without uh, the uh, light pollution, really. Right. Bob Cajun, by the way, is a cottage country lake town, correct? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that's right. I'm going to pick a song off of their last album. Uh, which was Man Machine Poem. Honestly, one of their coolest albums. It ranks so fucking high. It ranks higher for me every yeah. time I listen to it. The song I'm taking off it for my Desert Island is Insarnia. It's actually my favorite track on the on the album. I was a pipe fitter for a number of years, and uh, Sarnia is uh, kind of like this little industrial town on the U.S. Canada or close to the U.S. border. It's it's in that area anyways a lot of people that i work with on the road and in camp jobs have spent a lot of time in sarnia think of a lot of workplace references see you staring at your phone uh, like a poker hand hey what are you reading he said the love you're given will pour right through your hand and it's in my it's in my pocket it's in my blood sarnia also at the last show that we saw jesse in vancouver they played in sarnia and blew the roof off that's also on my list i remember that performance uh, as well too i love that lyric when he starts to kind of get as you mentioned frantic you're in my heart it's in my pockets in my eyes and my blood he recorded this song in one take because it was almost like too difficult to do it again he didn't want to do it again so we just let it go that one take incredible it's my favorite song off that album too i'm gonna uh, go with lake fever off of music at work it sounds like summer 
to me. The track has piano in it, which I feel is rare for the hip. There's a triumphant sort of bridge. It's about a cholera outbreak uh, in the early 1900s in, in Toronto, the shores of Lake Ontario. Epidemic of sorts. What it's Canadians really put on when they want to think about summer. The next song for me is from In Violet Light. It's a good life if you don't weaken. I always go back to, to, to the lyrics because uh, I'm not a musician. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I just hear really nice sounds and can kind of pick up on them. But the lyrics of the song are incredible and a force of whispering speakers. It's a good life if you don't weaken by the life. Peak ethereal haunting hip. Get with the times in a current health to stay. Let's get friendship right and get life day to day. I'm going to go with uh, Chargon Falls. I <laughs> Chagrin Falls. More rocking version of Grace 2 to me. Same kind of drum beat starts off the same. Mid tempo, super funky, big chorus. I remember they played that tune live when we saw them in Vancouver when they were touring this, touring this record. And it's, just, it's just a big, massive tune. That was like one of the highlights of the concert too. And I think yeah, that yeah. was sort of, I think that maybe was like one of our Dark Horses, a song we were both really vibing on at the time. Yeah. My very first concert, by the way, not just my first hip concert, but certainly the first stadium concert I'd ever been to. I remember Vapor Trails on that one and like, I didn't like it on the record. They played it and I'm like, holy shit, this song rules. Was it the Rio Statics that opened? Who opened on I that I know one? it was, um, it was uh, Feist uh, Band uh, uh, by Divine right. right. The opening bands is crazy too. Cause I remember, yeah, Joel Plaskett opened up for them in Vancouver. I think Tristan and jesse were you both at that show and then yeah the sadies later on um i saw the sadies open for them in victoria those guys are friggin awesome to watch live really high energy yeah chagrin falls no profound sound no special effects the continent tipped and she just quietly left i'm gonna go with greasy jungle I saw your hands melt into one another. I ate your funeral's uh, cookies. The part where he's doing the dishes, that funeral vibe where somebody's died. Maybe you're not the immediate person that's close to them. The whole like doing the dishes of somebody who's possibly deceased or whatever. And then he looks out and he sees the uh, ghost ballerina hovering above the snow. Goosebumpy that shit, man. This is one of those ones that I probably wouldn't have cared for a ton at first. Metropolis Noir, I'm, I'm fairly sure I didn't understand the lyrics when I first heard that. I talked about that on my list as well, Jordan, where I said that I didn't like this song when I first heard it. 31 is Greasy Jungle. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't like Greasy Jungle. I didn't get it. And uh, I come on the radio and, and honestly, it kind of turned me off to Trash Kid for a while. Now I love it. It's kind of like Janie's Got a Gun from Aerosmith. And this was my first actual song. I can remember even knowing that it was a tragically hip, honestly. Right. Like I, very similar for me. And it's funny because I got a lot of Aerosmith ties with Jordan Venn as well. You're responsible for me liking a lot of different Aerosmith songs. I, I did listen to Get a Grip. A, a, a get, a, get a Grip. And that's why, because I didn't like Get a Grip until yeah. you, you kind of talked me into it. But an Aerosmith song that reminds me so much of Greasy Jungle is Jamie's Got a Gun by Aerosmith. A song that I hated when I was a kid. I was like, this fucking this sucks. And then <laughs> late, later on in life or whatever, it's just like, I don't know if this was the hip's best studio track. I, I'd like, I think the Day for Night is honestly their best like recorded album. Greasy Jungle and maybe Titanic Terrarium, but or Scared or something like that. But Greasy Jungle really stands out to me as being like their top studio track and same as Jamie's Got a Gun from Aerosmith. My next pick, it's me, I'm up next. I'm going to go ahead and take from up to here, the song 38 Years Old. They didn't play it on their final tour because uh gord's older brother his name is mike in the song it's about this guy who gets locked up his sister got raped so a man got killed a local boy went to prison man's buried on the hill uh there's a prison break uh, maximum security prison and it's his brother mike i love this story and i really love the sound of this song it's trickle down off up to here there's a few real gem lyrics on that uh right i don't think i have anything from up to here but i can see well, that's good to know that's good to know that's good to know for my next pick thank you jordan the sounds of summer Summer is killing us. It's just sing, sing, sing all day. From In Between Evolution, Johnny Fay doing Keith Moon. It starts with a big drum fill. It's an energetic track. It's pretty simple musically. Like it's a three chord kind of jam for the most part. Gord, he does this woo. In the music videos, they have fake band names. He talks about the names of other bands a lot in songs, including this one. Back at Sunshine, it's the Shadow Band. He has a lot of fictional band names that he drops in the tunes. That's kind of cool. Summer's killing us in between evolution. Anybody else have that song on your list? And, okay. 
Can we edit in uh, some cricket noises at that point? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one for me, uh, looking for a place to happen. The opening lyric, really lucky to travel for like six years of my life, be away from home for 10 months of the year. The opening line of that song is, I've got a job I explore. Obviously, the rest of the song has a lot of different meaning and and, and some kind of darkness in there as well, too. Jacques Cartier right this way. How much cooler would have grade five social studies been if the syllabus was based on fully completely? <laughs> I'm going to go up to here, do Boots or Hearts. One of the happiest, funnest uh, hip songs out there. When they opened up with that tune in the last show in Victoria, a big dark cloud of <laughs> this being the last concert. Yeah. I don't know who knows what his health is going to be in that. But he came out, he's wearing the, even like the silver leather suit. They went and right into Boots of Hearts. And it was just like, oh, it's going to be okay. Like, the place was just going awesome. nuts. Fingers and toes. Fingers, Fingers and toes. And toes. <laughs> 41 if you include the fact that we don't care. I think that none of you will have this one. Eldorado. I had oh, that one. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I love the stopwatch. The going throughout it it's rad it really kind of sets the uh the urgency of it i always took this one to be about a uranium mine the El Dorado uranium mine and i think it's about using the atomic bomb person is having possibly what's his nuts the guy that was after fdr truman yeah harry truman who didn't know they even had the nuclear bomb and then all of a sudden FDR dies. He's kind of like, do I use this? Don't I use this? And he has no genius for evil. It makes him common, right? Like he's a bit of a common man. The references to Berlin. Man-sized Eldorado also could be like a, uh, you know, there's Fat Boy and Little Boy, I think it is, and Little Boy. Yeah. The bombs. I am going to go with At the 100th Meridian off of Fully Completely. The lyrics kill me on it. And... The performance, the live performances, this is another one of those songs where it's just like 100th Meridian is such a fun live hip song. If I die of vanity, promise me, promise me to bury me someplace I don't want to be. You dig me up and transport me unceremoniously away from the swollen city breeze, garbage bag trees, whispers of disease, and acts of enormity, and lower me slowly and sadly and properly. Get Rye Cooter to sing my eulogy. Tristan Armstrong, two picks to go. Well, I'm not going to be afraid to select some obvious choices in this this final stretch here i'm gonna go with courage this is my only selection from uh fully completely actually it's a shuffle i think a lot of my picks have been determined by things i like about what the drums are doing courage couldn't come at a worse time it could mean various things so the second to last song is is actually the last song on my list so i'm gonna have to find a new song a long time running from road apples when you think of like this the slower songs the slower hip songs the ones that are more famous like wheat kings and fiddlers green i always go to long time running as like my slow once again it's the performance of it you got a boatload of nerve i would say you've been told work me against my friends you'll get left out in the cold love that they used it for the documentary i love the tremolo in that reminds me too of like the same thing we were talking about with bob cage putting you in the car kind of thing or whatever that song for me i had road apples was maybe the first cd i bought when i got my driver's license it's also the, around the time that that uh save tonight if I think Eagle I have John. yeah that song that song was yeah. big on the radio at the time i remember I that, like that but anyways one. but yeah i remember that being the hit at the time long time running for me too was one of the first songs that i absolutely loved off of that album and it showcase of gord's voice as well a bob rock era tune pick in view on my list it's just a fun classic hip sing-along bells and a lot of piano on the song it's 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 different for sure right those glockenspiel guitar lines right off the top super catchy i've been waiting to call you i do it's like it's really sim yeah. simple lyrics phone like phone rings once phone rings twice phone rings three that's why it's my favorite song from that from that album that was the the tour <laughs> where they played at the commodore too they played for two thousand people or something like that so i never got to experience the hip like that like right against the stage gore just going nuts and yeah, yeah that's a that's a real fun song funny for me when i remember listening to the to world container when it first came out it took me right to the end of the album it was the song world container that i finally kind of stopped and started yeah. listening to and then i was like okay i'm listening to that again and then listen to the whole album again all right i thought i was gonna have to do a desert island death match myself here but i think the last three or four picks have all been ones that were on my list so now i'm left with three for two i i feel like i'm i'm gonna go to this desert island and like, even if I don't win, things are going to be okay. You know what I mean? This one, I, I doubt this is going to be on any of your lists. Butts wiggling. A lot of people don't like this track. Yeah. That's the Kids it's in the Hall one? 
that's yeah. i mean that's part of the reason that i'm adding it in there is because it was part of the brain candy soundtrack the whole synergy of kids in the hall and the tragically hit up and uh you know the odds are kind of in there too because they were their their video heterosexual man had the kids in the hall mm-hmm. my opinion the drugs are ready yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got like this kind of corpo vibe to it that's really dark and twisted and uh, yeah, the cold hand of uh, constant approval coming down in a not quite far. This is like all this stuff is kind of like, you know, Friday night, get together with my best friend and we'd just drink Cokes and uh, eat Ritz crackers and watch back to back kids in the hall at 10 on on the cbc and all this kind of came together and so it's fun i don't think it's their best track but definitely elicits a fondness that could definitely be like a daily kind of groove i know you like you're a bit you're a big trouble in the headhouse fan but gogo's podcast dave go dave gogo's and he has one episode where he interviews stephen drake stephen drake pretty much produced that record right so who's stephen drake tris odds from the odds that was his first sort of in with the hip and then he where he mixed that one and then he produced coke machine glow but he talks about mixing that record quite a bit and getting it getting into it so it's worth checking out love the odds you know what's hard about odds there's no the and They're it's just like, called odds just called odds oh. but it should be the odds it's hard to say it's hard <laughs> to say it without the the it doesn't, doesn't feel right it doesn't feel no, it doesn't right feel, yeah. it doesn't feel right at all i'm gonna go with the darkest one from in violet light as the trailer park boys and don cherry in the music video a couple of very Canadian yeah. references and the trailer park boys being one of my absolute favorite television shows ever. Don Cherry being a figure from hockey, tragically hip are all big hockey fans. They all play hockey. The darkest one is a, it's a song that when in violet light came out, this was a huge track for me then growing on me over the years too. Very grungy. Anybody else? That was on my list too. What you believe you say without shame. I just do. To say what you mean, you don't mean what you say or you do. I thought your reading's really coming along. (laughs) (laughs) That's going to be the opener of the episode. (laughs) Tristan Armstrong, your last pick for your Desert Island playlist for the eh? Tragically Hip. I guess what I have to say is that um, the types of songs that I have been drawn to over the years have changed and shifted, you know, as I've matured and and understand things differently. And in the beginning, it was all about riffs and what sounded dope. You guys remember when you could buy tapes and CDs and stuff in like gas stations, corner stores, they were on like a spinning, had like these wire things that would hold them in. So I remember being on a family road trip uh, in Washington state. We were just camping various places. This must've been in probably 1998 and being at a gas station in Washington state and seeing Phantom Power cassette in one of those spinny wire things. I was curious about the album at that time and I hadn't hadn't even got into the hip yet. I bought the CD shortly after that because of the track Fireworks. That's going to be my pick is Fireworks. You know, when you're a kid and like you are exposed to music through your dad and your dad is showing you things and you're digging on it. This was the first instance where I exposed my dad to something that he liked and he heard fireworks. I first, I was afraid to show him the track because of the cursing in it. He ended up loving it because of the whole 72 Canada, Russia hockey series theme of it. And he just totally got into the band right away from that one track as well, a special bond sort of thing so i i need to include that track in my list i never oh. saw someone say that before that's like one of the things that i really like about this band is gord's funny a lot of the humor is the banter in between like bits of humor thrown into kind of canadiana humor right like you wouldn't get it if you wouldn't necessarily get that saying oh i never saw someone say that before is funny if you weren't canadian fireworks the lyrics uh talking about the uh 1972 summit series i think it was called the Canada versus Russia, huge deal here in Canada. And the saying in Canada is, where were you in 72 when Paul Henderson scored the goal to defeat the Russians in game eight, I think it was. It was a mm-hmm. summit series. And and yeah. And so there was also a, another part where a game was played in Vancouver. Phil Esposito basically tore into the crowd on the mic over the loudspeaker about giving up on the team and stuff like that. And that was just Phil Esposito being one of the greatest hockey players of all time and uh, a really big moment as well in that series. That was just one of the things in Canada for sure that you heard a lot when we were all growing up was where were you in 72? So my whole 20 list has been taken. So I've had to dip into the extended list. And so I have to just pick a certain song that hasn't been picked yet. I don't think anybody's picked New Orleans is sinking yet, right? That song is just so iconic. Everything about it. New Orleans is sinking from up to here. One of the first hip songs I'd ever heard uh, as a kid. Those guitar riffs are amazing. Us guitar players here can all agree to those. That's probably the first hip riff you ever learned. Absolutely was. I, I would 
put New Orleans on my list if I hadn't listened to it for 500 times. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's, I, I could, I don't ever need to hear it again. Not because it's a bad song, just listen to it that much in my life that it's just like. You probably all played it live, like at least yeah. 20 times each. Yeah, probably played it 100 times live, no matter what happens to that song. And I'll try to vote it off because it's coming with me no matter what. When Tim Robbins is in solitary confinement and he has uh, Beethoven with him, I have New Orleans is sinking just on, on loop. Uh, the hands in the river, feet back up on the banks, looked up to yeah. the board above and said, hey man, thanks. For us growing up in, you know, we had a river in our town. Yep. The Nanaimo River is my favorite part about Vancouver Island, period. This song, Discovering the Hip as a teenager, hanging out at the river much as I could in the summertime. The two are tied together forever, for me anyways, for this song. Probably their most accessible song. I think it's, if you're gonna, if you're coming into the tragically hit blind, it's probably one of the first songs you should check out. Well, other songs from other famous bands are so overplayed. This one doesn't bother me. If I hear it in the car, yeah. I'm singing it. It's so good. Last pick, the debate between two picks, the first track on the first record or the last track on the last record. <laughs> Machine is that the last track or is it? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm just gonna go with Blow It High So good live. <laughs> when when they reach the drop in that tune, I remember the first time seeing that, and it was like that sort of like atomic bomb lighting, yeah. like in the in the in the arena. It's just like white light. Paul Lang was guitar on that one, like just when he's just going hard on that. Rhythm. It just sounds like ten times heavier when you hear that tune live. When I saw them on the last show, definitely used to play that one. Lots in high school with bands. Rob Baker's slide guitar. I can play, you know, that whole slide solo note for note and sing all the Gord stuff on top of it. The high bass. Yeah, Johnny Faye crushes it. I remember hearing an interview with him and he said that's his favorite song to play live. I think that was my favorite part about the first hip show I ever saw was Johnny Faye. Great drummer. Jordan, Van, your last pick. I would say the two that I'm having trouble with right now be Save the Planet or Pigeon Camera. Ah, uh, Save the Planet. It's a uh, fan to power. Slays, it's like a lesser known track. It just kind of sits there unassumingly, but it slays. A man crosses the street, you don't move a muscle. Constitution of Granite, can't save the planet. What's left to become of us? When we're talking about microphones, this is a I'm using a Rode microphone and it's operating on phantom power. It was a contender. I definitely yeah. considered it. Last pick goes to myself and uh, to wrap up on the Desert Island death match. I'm just going to read off a couple runner-ups for me here just in front of me. Twist My Arm, The Last Recluse, Pigeon Camera, World Container, Wheat Kings, uh, which is uh, David Milgard's story, wrongfully accused, 20 years for nothing, well, that's nothing new. Uh, that's one of the one of the most famous songs here. Trickle Down, Titanic Terrarium got mentioned a few times, 700 Foot Ceiling, Springtime in Vienna, it's kind of like Blow It High Dove for me the great live sh song especially off of uh, a record that we didn't mention which is uh we are the same i had uh, the opening track i think or yeah the opening morning track moon. morning moon and the last runner up for me uh the closest one that didn't make my list was scared off of day for night another slow one final pick is the final song I saw the Tragically Hit play live. It's off of Road Apples. The song is Three Pistols. Yeah, Tom Thompson came paddling past. I'm pretty sure it was him. CD I bought was Road Apples, the first CD I bought for the hip. I just remember singing along with the songs so much, whether it be in my car, at my house, or anything like that, and just like belting it out and try to sing like Gord. This song for me was always probably one of my favorites to sing along with. I just thought it was so cool, just the way the bridge hits. Apparently, Gord said that this was his least favorite to sing, or maybe it was the hardest for him to sing, or something like that. Like, he really put a little extra mustard into this one. Close out Desert Island Deathmatch is Three Pistols. That track kind of coincides with the beginning of the can rock renaissance serendipitous bring on a brand new renaissance because i think i'm ready yeah like i didn't even know who tom thompson was till many years later kind of thing like i just it wasn't the lyrics that really did it for me it was kind of the way it was presented and the way the song kind of came out his fingers start to wiggle and landscapes emerge. I mean, that's a great song. I used to cover it a lot. Great riffs. One thing I want to address, though, is the backing vocal. I still have no idea what is being said. Yeah, sweep them all away. Yeah. That would make more sense. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. This one was a favorite at the Rod and Gun. Makes me think of that place. In Parksville? 
Yes. The only time I've ever been hit on it in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> the rotten gun. The rotten gun is like uh, the Apollo of the <laughs> Island. Thank you to everyone here today. Jordan Van Music, available online on Bandcamp. Where can they find you, Jordan? Um, Go to Spotify or, or Apple Music. Any, You know what? We're on every streaming service that's a streaming service. Jordan Venn and the Slizneys. Terrible idea for a band name because... <laughs> nonsense word and nobody knows what you're saying maybe you can if you just type in jordan venn a uh, life is a shipping lane is our last record if you type life is a shipping lane that should come up on this channel as well i've had quite a few of jordan songs playing in uh, intros and exits and stuff like that so there's links to a lot of jordan ben's tracks and there'll be links in the description Tristan clark where can they find you your music what's going on these days check out my website tristanclarkmusic.ca or the tristones.com um it's on every streaming platform instagram the the tristones t-h-e-t-r-i-s-t-o-n-e-s tristan armstrong where can they find you online Bandcamp is great you know if if you feel inclined to pay for music i certainly encourage people to go there for for all of us i'm at uh, tristan armstrong music .com, but my music is also on spotify and all those other places just if you type in tristan armstrong you'll find some stuff and that last single boathouse the boathouse yeah it's, it's that's a band that i'm in also in a band called the actual goners but i guess that's the latest one is, is the boathouse type that into spotify as well dope video great references go to uh, jordan venn at tristan armstrong <laughs> and the tristones <laughs> Do that for me, please. Tristan Armstrong, so featured in a lot of episodes as well. Uh, one song that works really well and people have complimented on a lot uh, was a song called Periscope. It's probably one of the most, one of the songs people ask me about the most. The the most asked about song would be from Tristan Clark, uh, from the Tristones, and the song is First World Problems. The opening to a lot of the earlier episodes, I use that track and people would give me credit saying like, oh, I just love what you do at the start of that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they did that <laughs> too. People, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> ah, it's such a great opening to the thing and i love the theme of the song to the first world problems and stuff like that and at the time kind of getting like a youtube thing going and and uh it just really married well with things i was that's, thinking that's about the genius often. of jordan there on on that tune oh really a co-write that co right yeah yeah. yeah sweet you guys co-wrote trump as well right you yeah. co-wrote a bunch of things yeah sorry break her down is, very is, sick man is probably. my favorite i get that song weekly in my head i am a very sick man, man. <laughs> do, 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 do. great albums guys and there'll be links in the description below for everybody here and thank you again for yeah the music over the years and tragically hip so fun to kind of get together and talk about a band that you know i've got memories for all of you guys uh for the tragically hip for sure but i really like i think it was jordan at the start bringing up that it's kind of a good thing they weren't and you know, that would have changed things. We had a band in Canada called the Bare Naked Ladies who actually made a couple of really great albums and then they got really famous. So it just wasn't the same. These are very different bands. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that it's kind of a different trajectory when you do get famous. A band that we all really love, a lot of respect for, a lot of tears shed um, when Gord passed away a few years back. Desert Island Deathmatch, please. Uh, the links for our playlists are below in the description for each person. Let us know who you think got the best playlist for their Desert Island because um, you'll get to go with them to their desert island jordan sounds like a lot of fun there's a lot of spooning yeah. at night yeah don't I, you worry i got lots of smokes vote in below tell us the songs that we missed uh, remember to like comment subscribe all that sort of stuff i hope you guys all come back again um it's fun just to hang out with some of my best friends here and uh, i'm sorry i'm a little low on facts and high on opinions respect to canada's band the tragically hip. Do you guys watch hot girls play chess on YouTube ever? I will. Took the back roads.